The Sunday TV Mass is brought to you by the Catholic Diocese of Sioux Falls with support from the Catholic Diocese of Rapid City, the Catholic Family Sharing Appeal, the generosity of viewers like you, and from a grant from the Catholic Community Foundation for Eastern South Dakota, which raises, manages, and distributes God's gifts to donors. Ministries. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, God wants to flood us with his grace, and all we need to do is open our hearts to receive his love. So as we enter into this Mass tonight and today, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who, for the faith they profess, are accorded Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus said the Lord, Just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, 
because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not see it and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches chokes the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. When you or I were first baptized, God's seed was planted within us. And within that seed were those beautiful gifts that God wanted each of us to have. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, the supernatural virtues of prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude, and those great gifts that only God can give of faith, hope, and love. The question is, since that seed was planted in our heart, what does the soil, if you will, of our heart look like? Have we been dried up? Have we been lured away by the riches of the world, the many distractions of life, the worries and anxieties? This beautiful imagery that Jesus uses of this farming image, if you will, the planting image, of the seed and the soil. 
We know, any of us who've had the privilege of either growing up on a farm or doing gardening, those sorts of things, that a lot of it depends on the soil. How good is the soil? Obviously, there's other factors, rain and sun and nutrients, but we want to focus on the soil. And when you think of the soil, think of ourselves, the deepest part of ourselves being our soul. So when the seed is planted, it needs to be protected, cared for, needs to be nurtured along its way. The Word of God, the beautiful gift of our faith, is that way by which we are nourished and strengthened. But there are many things that can get in the way of us producing great fruits spiritually. The first image, of course, is the seed that's sown on the path. I remember growing up on the farm when I'd see how dad would plant, I'd sometimes wonder, well, dad, why did you run the planter onto the driveway? Well, they didn't have GPS in those days, and of course, they didn't have planters that shut off at a certain point, so seed fell on the ground. And guess who was on the ground? The birds. They got free wheat. Who's coming to pluck away that seed of God in our life? And even more importantly, what is it in us, some aspect of our life, that makes us hardened of heart, calloused, cold, distant from God? We might say, well, I can't believe that God loves me, really loves me, I can't believe that God is allowing all of these things to happen in our world today, if he's a loving God. Some might think, well, I'm smarter than that. I don't need this God thing. It might be a wound, some injury we've experienced in our life in some relationship, and as a consequence, we're very guarded, we're afraid. There can be all kinds of things that make us resistant to receiving God's grace each day. And it's good for us each to look in our lives and to say, is there a hardness in my heart? Some wound, some injury, some discouragement. I prayed for something. God never gave it to me. He must not love me. We want to open that up to God. Let God soften that soil of our heart, if you will. The next image... So the first is, having been sown on the path where it can't receive the word of God, and the evil one comes and steals it away. Jesus is so very clear. The evil one is always around. He's always lurking for those opportunities to steal the goodness from us. So we need to be very vigilant in the ways of the evil one. Secondly, the seed sown on rocky ground. So that's where we hear the word of God. We receive it with great joy, but it only lasts for a little while. I think of times like when I went on a retreat or some spiritual experience like, oh, this is great. Now I'm going to got it all down. But however many hours or days later, it seems like I was back to where I was. Hadn't taken deep enough root. It wasn't solidified enough. I gave into the grace of the moment awesome, but maybe I didn't have the support systems around me after that that kept me in that same place of being disposed to God. So for our souls, what are the things where we don't go deep enough in our relationship with God and we become easily discouraged, easily saddened, easily frustrated, want to give up? What are those things in our life that prevent us from having faith, hope, and love. And what happens here? The evil one comes and steals away what is sown in his heart. It's good for us to remember those spiritual experiences we've had in our hearts, in our lives. Or maybe we had more fervor about the spiritual life. Remember those. Ask God to renew the fervor of love the fervor of faith, to give us hope when we might be discouraged. The next one, the seed sown on the rocky ground. One hears the word of God, receives it, tribulation comes. I'm sorry, the third one is 
the seed sown among the thorns. One hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and lures of the riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. Any of us who've done gardening or farming types of things, we know when the weeds come in, often the weeds overpower. They steal the nutrients. They steal the sunlight. You don't get much fruit, if anything. What are the things in our life that are stealing away the nutrients of what's going to bring us happiness? Well, in today's world, we have lots of things to distract us. Think of all the things on the internet. Not that they're all bad, but how often are we just caught up in the things of the internet of some sort? We get distracted or entertainment, pleasures of the world. What are the things that steal away worldly anxieties, the lure of riches? It's very easy to get distracted by the riches of this world, to be, re to be preoccupied by the things of our minds that we like, affirmation, encouragement, success. Those things are not what's most important. What's most important is our interior relationship with God and how that's shared with others. And of course, the last is the seed that's sown on the rich soil. The person hears it, understands it, it bears great fruit many times over. That reminds me of my father's favorite 80 acres. Beautiful, rich, dark soil, the best land, if you will, that we had. And oh, how he relished that. And he was excited to see what it would produce the next year. Very often, that's where we would plant the test plot, right? You want to see how much you can raise? It was rich. Nutrients were there. The soil could hold the water. And it was very productive. What are the things we're bringing into our lives that are going to make us rich spiritually? Nourish us. Protect us from dryness in the spiritual life. Distraction. Temptations. Discouragements. My brothers and sisters, we're all imperfect. But God can take our imperfections and do amazing things with them. All we need to do is to be humble and ask, Lord, fill me with the richness of the rich soil, that the grace you first gave me in baptism will be renewed in my heart. Share that love with you and share that love with others. Let's pray for that grace for each other as we make our journey through life. Always aware that there could be hardness of heart, things that want to come and steal us away, dryness in the spiritual life, temptations, anxieties, all the things the scripture refers to. But let us not be discouraged. God takes all kinds of us and can bring great things. All we need to do is be humble and ask for it. Receive it and trust his love for us. I believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the light of the world to come. So we acknowledge our great need for God in order to be able to be filled with the light of his love and share that with others. We now place before him our prayers petition. That the church may act as mediator in the name of Christ our Savior, finding solutions to problems affecting social harmony and human rights. We pray to the Lord. Lord for a greater respect to human life, no matter what ethnicity, race, or religion, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the police officers and law enforcement personnel who protect us in our city and state, that they may know of our gratitude for their unwavering service and sacrifice, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those who are suffering or hurting physically, spiritually, emotionally, economically, due to the COVID pandemic or other events beyond their control, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those called to heal the sick and the suffering, especially doctors and nurses, those on the front lines of fighting the virus, that their healing profession may imitate the compassion and goodwill of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those most in need, the sick and the dying, the homeless and the jobless, the incarcerated and the addicted, that the seed of hope may be planted firmly in the soil of God's love for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our cathedral parish, that we will be a vibrant faith community of prayer, evangelization, and charitable action, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your great love for us, you planted within our heart the beautiful gift of your own divine life and love in baptism. You strengthen it through the sacramental life and the graces that you have for us each day. We ask that you hear and grant these prayers and all of our needs so that we can be your faithful disciples, be fervent in love, and share it with you and others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in tears, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please come to either the bishop or the deacon up front and not to the lay Eucharistic ministers. Thank you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
We welcome your comments, suggestions, and prayer intentions, as well as your support of the Sunday TV Mass. During this unusual time, you can also support your own parish through online giving at sfcatholic.org. Click on the Donate button. Or you can write to us at the Sunday TV Mass, 523 North Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57104. The Sunday TV Mass is a production of the Communications Office of the Catholic Diocese of Sioux Falls and is supported by the Catholic Family Sharing Appeal and the generous support of our viewers.